Hi, in this video we'll be talking about some of the common terminologies in React which are the functional and class components as well as React state and props. So what are functional and class based components? Let's look at some code to basically visualize what we mean by functional and class components. So as the name suggests, functional components are just components that have a function declared and these are usually used to uh, identify components that won't have any state or prop and that is mostly used for just rendering purposes. So these are sort of like static components or dumb components. What are class-based components? Class-based components are basically, again, as the name suggests, it's a class component which has some lifecycle methods. For example, component did mount, render, and a constructor. Now, a class-based component is a smart component and is usually used whenever we have to maintain, whenever the component is smart enough to maintain its own state. A state is basically this variable over here, which, maintain, which stores the data of the component and re-renders whenever the data has been changed. In a class component, we have a, we have certain lifecycle methods. As you can see, one of them is component did mount. Component did mount is called at the beginning uh, before rendering the component. For example, render is the component that basically renders the data. But before it even starts rendering, if you want to do some if you want to do something, if you want to add some logic, this is always added in the component did mount. Usually, API calls are added in the component did mount lifecycle method. Similarly, we have other lifecycle methods like component did update and component did, uh, will unmount so right so component did update is used whenever we have to change the state on the fly due to some change in props and component will unmount is called whenever the component has been destroyed and we move away from the component or the component is unmounted or that means the component is is not in the viewport so these are not usually used that much. The component did mount lifecycle is used the most. Now let's look at some differences. So as, as we have mentioned before, functional components are used only for display purposes and class-based components are used for handling state and accessing React lifecycle methods. Uh, functional components can access props from the function parameter, whereas class-based components can access props from this.props. Now, props are sort of like attributes or inputs to a component. So, for example, while calling this header component, when I'm calling this in the app.jsx file, for example here, if I want to pass data to this, for example, if I want to pass some sort of an input to it, so if I want to name the app name. Now this attribute is called a prop, means it's a custom app attribute that I have, I have given this component. And for example, I want to pass the name of the app. For example, the name of the app is noted, right? So in, in the header.jsx file, if I want to access this props, we have a props variable. And we can just call this in the props.app name. So what this does is this will dynamically get the value from the props that have been passed to this component. What does this mean? So I've passed the name noted dynamically through a prop. So that's why this name noted appears in the header. So if I change this, for example, if I have passed something like dummy name, that would that would appear here as well so this is basically passing dynamic inputs to our component so that's what a prop is so functional components access the props through the function parameter which is shown like so and for class components we usually access the props using this dot props dot app name we haven't passed anything to this home component, so I'm just showing you an example of how to basically get the props inside a, a class-based component. Now that we know what a functional and class component is, let's move on to the other terminology, which is props and state. I've already discussed what prop is. Prop is basically a dynamic input object that's uh, that possesses the value passed down while calling the component. So I can just pass a dynamic input to a functional or a class-based component using props. Whereas a state is a component's own object containing data. Now, what is a state? This is basically the state. This variable holds the information of a particular component, and this is usually used whenever we want to re-trigger the component render. So for example, for event-driven cases, for example, if I click a button, if, if the data has changed and we want to re-render the component based on the change in data, 
we would use state variables for that. So for example, for our API call, we are setting the state in this data variable. So we are setting this.state.data equals to dates. I have used ES6 shortcuts. That's why it looked a bit weird. That is how I'm assigning data to the state variable called data. We can just change it to something like notes and then it would just be assigned to it. The data would just be assigned to the notes variable. So a prop is immutable. So whatever is passed down to a component from its parent component, it can never, never be changed because it's just an input that has been passed, that has been inherited from the parent. But state, however, is mutable because this is something that the component itself contains. The props can only be changed by the parent component and the state can only be changed by the own component, that is the current component. Props can be used in both functional and class-based components. However, a state can only be used in class-based components. That The reason we use states is basically for smart components that holds its own data. Props cannot access any lifecycle methods. It's just a simple function, whereas state has access to all the component lifecycle methods, the one that we have identified, which are component did mount, component will unmount, and component did update. States can only be set through this.set state. You would probably assume that this.state.data equals to data or this.state.notes equals to notes is something that we would normally assume. But this is a wrong way to reassign states. States can only be reassigned through the this.setState state method. And this is an asynchronous method, means it does not happen immediately. It happens asynchronously. So once the this.setState state is called, the whole React render life render is re-triggered and the component renders again with the new value of the state. Awesome. So now that we're done with discussing some of the terminologies of React, let's move on to the actual coding, which is listing the notes in our homepage.